Halloween, while mortals raise hell, hell vomits up the damned. Pranks by Dennis J. Higman. Its first publishing was in January 1983 through Dorchester Publishing's horror suspense thriller line by Leisure. The cover, noticeably devoid of its Halloween theme, features the floating head of a strangly haired blonde boy staring at you menacingly. A red blob hovers above him, oozing blood droplets. However, by the early 1990s, Leisure had mastered the art of graphic horror paperback covers and re-released it, magnifying the book's Halloween tenet. Author of the book, Dennis J. Higman, has virtually no ripples in the publishing world outside of pranks. The only other trace of him on the internet of Dennis J. Higman, the man I found, was in Idaho, where he's facing a fine for failure to register his vehicle. It appears his date of birth was 1940, which would be in the age range of he was in his early 40s when the book was published. With only a pitiful 2.6 rating on Goodreads, it's the stark splendor of its cover that lifts its fame in horror paperback realm. Its pitch black canvas accentuates the focal character of the cover. Pranks is slightly arched in gold embossed lettering. An adolescent boy staring at you with sullen eyes is spliced with the falcate shape of a grinning jack-o'-lantern jaw. And to add to the already unsightly horror is an axe plunged into the side of the boy's head with a trail of blood dripping down. Turning it over, the back cover tagline reads, Trick or Treat and Die. It was Halloween night and the kids were dressed to kill. All they wanted was a little harmless fun on that foggy October evening. A little revenge against the uptight, solid citizens of Puget Sound who looked down on them. A few overturned garbage cans, a couple of smashed pumpkins, a cherry bomb or two. That was their plan. But as it grew darker and windier, their pranks turned meaner and nastier. Pets died. So did some livestock. And as the storm moved in, the kids were seized by an overpowering force of evil, compelling them to commit fearful acts of violence. Driven by their mindless bloodlust, tormented by forbidden urges, the children of Puget Sound went on a rampage of death and destruction. Murder became their favorite trick, and their victims' only treat was to die quickly. Pranks. From front cover to back cover, they incorporate the colors of Halloween, as that's what they were looking to capitalize on. The gist of that back cover plot is partially true for the first third of the book. There is a Halloween party. There are kids gathering. There's a mixture of middle school kids as well as the old neighborhood lady who's paranoid and always calling the cops, as well as a family called the Millers who is hosting a Halloween party for all our characters. The mischief of the plot is mostly driven by the main character, Bucky, who is a troublesome young youth who essentially leads a lot of this rampage with his sidekick. The other kids are mostly good. It's set in the Pacific Northwest and there is a storm rolling in on Halloween night. There's a nice build up to that. It almost seems like the climax, but you're only about 30 pages into this book at this point. After a few pranks and the power going out, Halloween descends though, and it's November 1st with only one death on Halloween night as Bucky kills a local old man on the dock. But there's still hundreds of pages left in the book, and we follow a lot of the adult characters, including Bucky's teacher who's worried about him being psycho because he's hanging in mutilated and gory artwork for his school assignments. We also have a cop getting calls from the neighborhood old lady who's complaining about Bucky riding motorcycles and tipping over cows. 
in Bucky's reports through the school, it documents his misbehavior, including in September 1977, he received five paddles. This good son type of shenanigans continues. He's the son of a rapist, as his mom ended up having his rape child. So the bad blood is betwixt them. Based on a lot of the other reviews that I see, they came to this book, like me, seeking certain elements of horror and Halloween that the book did not deliver. The prose is readable, but overall the storytelling and suspense is amateurish. I'd say if there were a d more of a demonic element where the whole posse of rascals joined in on the mayhem and it strictly stuck to Halloween and played up those themes, it would have overall been a better book. A book often confused with pranks is David Robbins' Prank Night. That's David Robbins of the End World series and contributor to other popular men's adventure novels of the 80s and early 90s. Final grade for me is a C minus. Only a modicum of enjoyment can be gleaned from this. This has been a Paul Barkanum segment from our Halloween podcast special compilation. Search your podcast app for the full episode.